Good afternoon. This is Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Hope you all are having a wonderful day. Um, my dogs are <laughs> sleeping. One's right underneath my feet here. Anyway, before we go for a walk, I figured I would bring you up to speed on all things Amber Portwood. Now, in my stream this morning, I shared Amber's revelations related to her health as well as some details about um, where she's at right now. And interestingly, uh, Mr. Uh, Andrew Glennon actually had an interview, not just like, not just a, a um, statements made on Instagram, but he actually had an interview with the Daily Mail TV, which they posted on their website. I'll put a, I'll put a link in the description when we're done with this video. Now, in the in the video or in the it's on Daily Mail TV, which I know a lot of people. If you're in England, you call it the Daily Fail. Either way, um, he had some things to say about what was going on with him and with Amber. And according to Andrew, everything in his life has been completely uprooted since what happened between him and Amber. And they're in a place right now where. He's decided that it's best for him and James to no longer be a part of the Teen Mom OG franchise because he wants to provide an environment that is safe um, and provide happy memories for his son. And right now he thinks he needs to step away from the show. So some of the quotes from his uh, stream and they did a two minute clip and they sort of like pieced together some of the things that he says, but he said, I need to do what's right for James and I need to take the right steps for myself. The future is unknown. All I know is that I, what I need to do like right now and that is to provide James with a safe, secure and happy environment. And then when he described how everything has been going after since like the incident, he said, if you could imagine having your whole world and everything that you have you love flipped upside down in a heartbeat, that's it. <clears throat> and then in terms of like what will happen with him and Amber and custody with James. So if you remember, he is requesting full custody of his son with Amber Portwood. And he has requested that the court give her supervised visitation. Um, he said he's concerned about James because of his age. He'll need to have, um, he's concerned about the drama or the trauma that the baby has experienced over the last few months. And so he said that he's going to be working on making sure that he fills uh, his son's life with like happy memories and making sure that he gets the love and support that he needs to get through this. Um, because of the way that the brain develops at that age and making sure that he doesn't lack those connections that can happen when you're not getting enough nurturing. So he seems pretty pragmatic in what he wants to do for James. Um, and then in terms of like what he said moving forward and what it meant for his relationship, he said it's going to be a lot of healing and needs that needs to be done and repairing between James and I. As far as relationships go in the future, a lot of healing has to be done for everyone. So at this point, they haven't basically said that they're split up, but it doesn't sound like there's reconciliation coming in the future. In fact, last week, sources connected to Amber said uh, reconciliation between the two would be unlikely at this point. Um, and then he, re he brought up the issues related to the post she made on Instagram last week referencing cheating. And he said, my name was never mentioned in the post that she released. I guess it was just rough timing. People are just going to slap it on me. It's a it's a bashing of my character. And that and what hurts, I guess, is the fact that she hasn't come out and made a statement to say, you know, I wasn't talking about Andrew. I was talking about somebody else. Now. He said on Instagram last week that the post that she made about cheating was not related to Andrew and that he said that a source connected to Amber told him this, that it was actually related to someone, one of her friends. And then when she realized the fact that it was uh, coming off the wrong way, she quickly deleted it off of Instagram. However, 
only a couple days later, some rumors started surfacing that never sort of came to fruition that he was talking to another woman online. And then she put up the, you know, broken heart thing on Instagram, which kind of just sort of solidified that that was actually a lie. And that post was about him. So it's probably why she's not saying it wasn't about him because it was about him. So Sat, he was pretty emotional in this video. Um, he was like, he was having a hard time talking. He was sort of fighting back. Uh, his voice was quivering and he was sort of like choked up at times. Um, he seemed super like sad and just not very like happy about what's going on. Obviously very, a lot of trauma that's going on. So that's, um, that's the deal with and and uh, Andrew Glennon. I think, you know, the more and more that he's talking and the more that she's talking, he's, you know, his story is kind of staying the same. But then, you know, with what I said earlier in my stream this morning was that people connected to her are seeming to want to paint this narrative that mo there's way more to the story than what's going on and then what you're seeing and trying to like sort of present doubt in that he's an opportunist that use is using this as a way to get like child support and fame and not having to work. That's actually what her brother said. So Sean actually was spoke spoke to the Ashley Reality Roundup last week and said that um, Andrew's basically like requesting that she pay for everything and pay, pay for child support and blah, blah, blah. And he's just doing this so he doesn't have to work. So when you have, um, when you're the breadwinner, Amber, and you're the one that's like accused of doing something, typically the breadwinner in a situation is the one that pays child support and the one that doesn't have primary custody is the one that pays child support. So it would actually be not out of the picture or out of the question for him to ask for child support, given that it's like joint, it's a child that the two of them made together. That's just parental responsibility. Um, I don't really understand why they're so like, got to plant the seed that he's somehow like doing this for money and a way to like get away from all this. Now, there's also some questions about whether or not he's gonna move to Indiana and none of that has really been answered at this point. And I can say that if there is a, um, if they do end up like say terminating her parental rights, which would take a lot, you guys, like a ton, um, then he would be like free to go and free to move. But if they come to sort of a custody agreement, he might not actually be able to leave the state of Indiana if um, they get say like she gets rights to his, um, like visitation, he would have to stay in Indiana so that she can still have access to him. So it's not probable at this point that he would be moving back to California. Um, he might be stuck in Indiana because of Amber, unless of course she is convicted of these felonies and ends up going to jail. Um, she, he might be granted sole custody at that point and she having no custody. And if that happens, then she could absolutely, he could absolutely leave the state. So there's going to be a lot that's going to come up here. Her next court date is in August, and um, it's at the end of the month. I can't believe it's the last day of, almost the last day of July, you guys. This has flown by. Um, but I think Andrew's kind of stuck, sticking to the same story, and Amber's just kind of deflecting and sort of insinuating that he deserved this. So it's hard to know. You know, she's got a lot going on with her health, but at the same time, um, she also has a history of this. And that's sort of what the Daily Mail pointed out. They actually showed videos. And when you see the videos of all of the different altercations she's had over the years, not only with like Gary, but with castmates, um, with reunion shows, on marriage boot camps, her history of violence is very clear. Um, and so it's not necessarily like Andrew's the bad guy, but of course, you know, there's people on Twitter now that are connected to her basically saying, well, her friends warned him, warned her about him, and she didn't listen. And now all of this stuff is coming to fruition, and there's just more to the story. So I think that's the story they're going to stick to at this point. So that's what's the what's new with Andrew. If you want to see the video, I will put that in the description below. Make sure that you give this video a thumbs up and comment. That helps this video get further out if you want me to have like you yeah, you guys keep saying it, you love me so make sure you do that um, and if you have anything that you want me to talk about 
um, or there's the tips or you have different info, um, make sure you reach out to me on Twitter at WOA Crystal Ball or on Instagram, which is at Without a Crystal Ball, or on Facebook, facebook.com slash Without a Crystal Ball. I will be back later this afternoon, but stay tuned for all of that. And as soon as I know I'll go live, I will always update Twitter so you know ahead of time when these streams start. I hope you guys have a great rest of your afternoon, and I'll see you soon. Bye.